Thanks. Okay. So uh, what was your impression of how that meeting went, and did you feel that the answers were at all satisfying that the CEOs gave? Um, to an extent. I think, you know, they're protecting their positions, they're, they're uh, defending their shareholders, and the study's ongoing. I think, you know, there's more to come, and we may have the witnesses come back again. But, um, you know, there's always a little bit of um, parading, a little bit of <laughs> embellishment. But I think overall, we got answers. Um, I think that there's a lot of work to be done by the Competition Bureau and, and the committee still. What, is, what do you think is kind of the most significant development to come out of this meeting in terms of uh, anything new that we learned? Um, I think the fact that they have provided the information to the Competition Bureau, the detailed financial information that has eluded us, so that kind of breakdown of what the profit margins were by sector is very important, and I'm happy to see that the Competition Bureau is going to be able to look into that. Um, I would say that is one of the things. The other thing is the discussion of the grocery code of conduct that they all seem to want to participate in. Um, I hope perhaps it's mandatory at some point, but um, I'm glad to see that they're all willing to participate. Do you think that's enough to satisfy people who are very upset about this issue? I don't think so. No, I think that, um, you know, really, as, as we said in the committee, it's a matter of trust. And I think that the grocery chains need to do more. Um, to satisfy that. As they say, they're, they're maximizing shareholder value, but the other stakeholders are very important. And we are in a, a, a specifically um, difficult time for, for many segments of the population. And I will say on International Women's Day, um, a lot of the team members and the customers are women. As you saw in that room, there weren't many women there. Um, so I think that um, they have to look at uh, different segments of the population and respond to concerns from these people. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, so, kind of same uh, same line of questioning. Is there anything that that you would have hoped that the CEOs would have uh, would have added to what they uh, told you guys today? No, I mean I think we've got some of the answers we want, but the study continues. I think we're going to hear from some from some more important witnesses, and you know we can't predetermine the outcome of a study before it's happened. But uh, I think we got some partial answers today. Certainly, I'm not fully satisfied yet. I think the average Canadian is is concerned by food price inflation and this is a top concern for Canadians right now so we've got to get to the bottom of this. Thank you. Sounds like. Yep. Really appreciate you coming to join us. Chris Ray on CBC. I just, we're, we're just wondering, there's a public relations aspect to everything. Do you feel that Western Group is, is losing the public relations battle over this concept of high grocery prices, people not afford them. We all shop at your stores. We're just wondering where, where, where you yeah. see that at. Look, this is uh, an incredibly difficult issue for Canadians. Uh, it's a difficult issue for us. It's a difficult issue for, uh, for Ottawa, for the provinces. Um, hopefully, you know, our opportunity to speak and respond to questions today has been helpful, not just in terms of satisfying the, um, the committee, but also you know, through uh, you know, media exposure uh, you know, to help uh, you know, rebuild public trust. In many ways, uh, your company, Law Laws, has been made out to be the boogeyman or a scapegoat of sorts. Do you, do you think that that is, that is the case? Do you, do you buy what the opposition is saying, that you're this sort of predatory company on Canadians? I hope, How do you respond to that? I hope my comments uh, in committee today were clear. Um, you know, we recognize that this is a very difficult challenge. Uh, we also, you know, are absolutely confident that Loblaw is doing the right things in very difficult circumstances on behalf of consumers. Um, and we are certainly not responsible for food price inflation in this country. How do you explain so why do you think that you've become the face of this? I mean, most of the heat and attention was on you. Mr. Singh got hot under the collar. Like, why have you and your company become kind of the avatars of this? Yeah. I don't know. Cyril, maybe we can just respond <laughs> just, to the camera. Yeah. Too, question. You're better, sir. Uh, I don't know. Well, how do you explain to Canadians that prices in your stores uh, can be higher than in your, some of your competitors? I'm thinking we've seen you know, some items go viral, like chicken and cheese. How do you explain that prices in your stores are higher than in your competitors? I think that's, um, ex these are examples of customers gravitating towards the, the highest price items when there's a perfectly uh, competitively priced chicken, uh, you know, right next door. 
Um, and you know, we looked at uh, our chicken prices across the entire enterprise and are very confident that we're offering terrific value. As a matter of interest, we lose money on every um, breast of chicken that we sell. You know, that really went viral, the whole the $25, I think it was maybe even $30 pack of chicken. Everyone did gravitate towards that because it's so shocking that something like chicken breast could cost that much money. Is that a... Is that a failure on your part to allow a product to go onto the shelf that has that type of price on it? Isn't that something that maybe the cost should be eaten up? The costs uh, of the of chicken um, at the were there. The, let me put it differently. Um, chicken was at the right price in those stores uh, available to customers. And so we are absolutely confident about that and we'll continue to make every effort to ensure but that that's the case. But how do you justify that those prices were there? You say that there's prices of chicken that are fair and reasonable, in, like sitting side by side, the expensive chicken. Then why is the expensive chicken there to begin with? It's a the specialty product. What documents Thank have you. you provided to the Thank competition? You. That's where I'm on schedule. Thank you. Appreciate you stopping. Thank you. Sorry about that. It was one of those moments. No, it's fine. Yeah, it's no, no worries. Yeah. Maybe I can just ask you quickly yeah, while you set it. up. Sure. Uh, go ahead. You, you, there was the motion there to ask for Costco and Walmart, uh, and that really is what the, the, th the three companies in place today were pushing for, that this be expanded. Uh, you know, to, what, to what extent? I mean, there's a lot of small chains, too. There's a lot of big American companies that operate here. Uh, you know, what would you be asking the CEOs of Walmart or, or uh, Costco if they were here today? Well, I think largely the same questions. There's, they're uh, important players in, in our food system, and uh, they, they retail food and sell it to the Canadian public. And uh, we want to look at the whole picture, right? We want to look at the supply chain. Uh, we had food processors uh, uh, recently, we've had some of the CEOs now for the food retailers, and uh, we've had the Competition Bureau, we've had quite a few other witnesses. So I think it's important we get a comprehensive perspective. Do you, do you buy what they're selling with regard to uh, profit margins? Well, I mean, I, I tried to dig into that in my questions. I think the data and the financial statements will certainly tell the Competition Bureau, and I'm certainly pleased to hear that they've some of them at least, as far as I can tell, have voluntarily submitted those statements. Those were going to be my one question too, but I guess uh, just to finish, is there anything um, is there anything else that you think the committee is missing from its overall study? Well, I think has we it should... focused enough on sort of the broader issues, as Galen Weston is saying, if you know this is the one dollar out of 25, what about the broader supply chain issues? I, mean, I think there's two things that are really important here. One is that our minister, Francois-Philippe Champagne, has requested the Competition Bureau to do the important work that it needs to do, and competitiveness is key to keeping prices down for Canadians. So that's one. The other is I would reference uh, in France just earlier this week, on Monday, they came up with a collaborative deal with uh, food retailers to keep prices down. So I think if, you know, that's one of the sentiments we heard today was that we should be collaborating across uh, public and private sectors to do what's in the best interest of Canadians, and I think that's what we should consider doing in Canada. And are the Liberals uh, supportive of this uh, idea for an excess profits tax that I think all all options are on the table. Obviously, I don't want to, um, you know, predict what the outcome of this study will be. So I think we have to consider that. That's certainly, we've heard that from the NDP and some others, but I think it's one of many possible uh, measures or mechanisms that we can use to, uh, to to get those prices down. Thanks so much. Thanks very much.